I guess if you're serious about woodworking, you're probably going to avoid IKEA like the plague. After all, self-assembly furniture in general has a bit of a poor reputation. But IKEA has a design aesthetic that people seem to love and a shopping experience like no other. So this is the Beckfam kitchen island and it's the starting point for this project. Inside the box, it's all made from solid laminated beach and at 35 quid, you'd be hard pressed to buy the same quantity of beach boards in the UK for the same money. IKEA hacking is quite fashionable these days and simple pieces of furniture like this have easy to understand joinery which almost encourages modification. And to be honest, if you try to design the same kitchen island from scratch, you may well be using the same hardware from the likes of Axminster or Rockler. That's to say, metal L brackets to secure the top and metal bolted corner fixings that make a really strong apron rail to leg joint. So welcome to the Straw Bite Workshop. My name is Carl and in the workshop this week we'll be making a mobile tool stand for my drill press from an IKEA Beckfam kitchen island. Okay, so we've built the sub base. Now, there's a couple of things I wanted to make sure that uh, works. Firstly, I kind of want the space underneath to be uh, used for storage. And I've got these storage bins. Uh, they're about 300 millimeters wide. And I kind of want to get these stacked in here. The other thing is it needs to be sort of wide enough and stable enough for the drill press. The drill press is very heavy. And this is kind of why I wanted to go with a, a sort of sh a solid wood frame. Um, and like I said, you, you just can't get the materials to the point whereby making this from scratch um, seems uh, convenient. I'll need to uh, reduce the width of the shelves. And to be perfectly honest, I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. I mean, the shelves themselves provide quite a lot of the rigidity, I suppose, in the actual frame itself. My guess is that as I'm essentially reducing the width by more than the width of the end piece here, I can afford to lose quite a bit of material off of the shelf before this really starts to be much of a problem and then maybe just uh, prise these out. Um, they appear to be glued and, and pinned so may maybe I can get a, uh, a chisel in and, and uh, knock that about a bit. Using parts boxes as a guide, I make a mark on the apron rail, losing 60 millimeters from its length. So the next thing to do is to transfer this mark onto the second piece of timber. And uh, we'll be using the table saw to cut these. So there we go. So that's how much we need to be taking off. And then we need to be replicating the um, groove on the inside. So that's it's a depth of eight millimeters and that's around about 5.7 millimeters from the end. So let's uh, trim these to length and then we'll um, recreate the groove and the screw holes and then these will just be shorter and then we can then reassemble the bench. With the rails cut to the desired length, I set the blade height to 8mm and check with the offcut. The fence is adjusted to place the groove 57mm from the end. I've pulled the fence back away from the blade and use a mitre gauge to make the cut safely. The two shelves are then cut down to the desired width as well.
With the cuts complete, we can drill new screw holes and begin reassembly. The shelf slats were attached to their rails with just wire nails, so I used a chisel to prise them away, and then a hacksaw to flush trim the nails as it wasn't easy to remove them completely. A quick sanding over the cut nails tidies up the rail. The slats are reattached to the rails with screws. So we've made the uh, kitchen island uh, narrower. Um, I've taken some measurements off the top. I need to cut uh, two pieces of MDF. Um, I'm using 18 mil MDF for this uh, that are 375 millimeters by 520 millimeters. And that will form the top. And once that's done, um, we'll be able to finish the project. So back to the table saw to rip the MDF to width. I didn't film the cross cutting, but suffice to say that it was a step that motivated me to make a proper circular saw guide. See the card above. Gluing up is pretty straightforward. Plenty of glue between the boards and screws in the corner to clamp them in place. Two coach screws or lag screws if you're in the US, backed with washers, secure the drill press to the bench. So to finish, I'll edge band with pine strip wood, cut to length, and use an offcut of OSB as a backing piece. So with the trim added, the drill stand is complete. And I have to say, I'm really happy with the result. This is really very sturdy and it's very mobile as well, which is exactly what I wanted. I can move this into the middle of the shop and um, get larger pieces in from the side. Uh, and I'll have plenty of room around this when it's in use. I appreciate that it's a relatively simple project in that all I've really done is modified some IKEA joinery to make this uh, narrower um, in width. Um, but I think it goes to show that you can take as a, a basis um, a simple item from a furniture store and modify it to your needs, in this case something for the workshop. Um, and yeah, I think the thing to bear in mind is that I priced up doing this project uh, in Beach from a local hardware dealer and the quote I was given was about 50 to £60. Pounds. Um, all of the materials in this project uh, came to under 40, uh, and that includes the kitchen island from IKEA. So anyway, if you like the project, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I'd invite you to do so. Uh, you'll get further updates and there'll be more from the workshop very soon. Um, but for now, cheerio.